All right, hello everybody. I uh, hope everybody had a good weekend, uh, had a good Halloween. Um, so we are to November, so the semester is starting to starting to wind down. So this month will go by pretty pretty quick. So um, all right, so today we're going to start on chapter. Um, in uh, chapter 11, I believe. So uh, we'll talk about, uh, today we'll talk about um, using multimedia in uh, your, your web page uh, development and design, uh, as well as some other, a uh, couple other things um, that deal with like uh, JavaScript and um, some more, uh, uh, it's a little more advanced uh, programming. We won't do a lot of that as far as like the, the case study or the, uh, um, the practice of coding activities, but uh, we'll go over it in the, in the lecture and just talk about it to kind of introduce you to this, uh, to, to some of those concepts. So um, let me get my screen pulled up and we will get going here. Okay, um, so we are, we're getting close to the end here. Um, so just to review real quick. Um, so this last week we finished up the forms, um, case study, uh, class activity, quiz, and then also the, uh, the final uh, project uh, web uh, sitemap and wireframes was due as well. Um, so just a, a quick, quick reminder before we move on. Um, I noticed there's some there's some students that still have uh, haven't turned in uh, some of these assignments uh, from the previous chapters, uh, like the the case studies or the class activities. Um, you still have time to turn those in. Um, okay, sorry, um, still have time to turn those in. Uh, the week of Thanksgiving will kind of be the cutoff on that. So um, after that, the zeros will stick in the gradebook. Uh, but up until Thanksgiving, um, if there's something that you didn't get turned in, uh, you can still submit those assignments and get credit for those. Uh, just take a few points off for being late. So um, if your grade's not looking too good right now, uh, you still, still got time to, to get that fixed. So you can get those turned in uh, up until Thanksgiving, but uh, after Thanksgiving, um, everything up until that point will, will be set as it is. So uh, if you have zeros in something after Thanksgiving, um, you'll, you'll have to live with the zero. So I uh, just wanted to remind you guys on that. So I know there's a few of you that have some stuff missing, so uh, you still have a chance to, to get those done and turned in. Uh, don't wait until the last minute though, because that's, uh, you'll just stress yourself out um, and it'll, it'll be a lot better to, to get that done here. But, um, but it will, November is going to fly by because we only really have three weeks of class in November because uh, we have Thanksgiving break. And then just a couple, couple weeks when we get back from Thanksgiving um, up until finals. So not a whole lot of time left. All right. Um, so let's talk about chapter 11. Um, I need to find my slides here. Let's see, let's open PowerPoint. <clears throat> um, okay. Sorry, I usually have these pulled up. Okay. All right. So uh, chapter 11 deals with web multimedia and interactivity. So kind of what we'll, we'll be looking at is um, <clears throat> how plugins work, uh, how uh, helper applications 
and media containers um, work as well as uh, codecs for audio and video. Uh, we'll talk about different types of multimedia files used on the web, um, how to link, link those files, and how to configure audio and video on a web page with HTML5 elements. Okay. Uh, we'll talk about some of the uh, uses for JavaScript, uh, Java, applets, Ajax, and jQuery. Um, we're not going to do flash animation. I'll talk about that here in a minute. Um, how to configure a Java applet. Uh, also, once we get to the end there, um, there's some interactivity stuff that we can do with CSS uh, as far as like an image gallery, um, different widgets. Um, and then uh, Canvas. So we can use HTML5 APIs to um, create a little uh, Canvas. And yeah, that should be it. So, uh, help, so helper applications and plugins. Um, a helper application is a program uh, that's designed to handle a particular file type, like a WAV file or a uh, MPEG uh, file. And it allows the user to um, view or uh, utilize, utilize those files. Um, a helper application usually runs in a separate window from the browser, OK? Um, we don't see a lot of this. Um, this is kind of be starting to kind of fade out. Uh, because as HTML5 advances, and then once we get uh, to HTML6 in the near future, um, a lot of this is being run and contained from within the, the browsers, which is nice because uh, we don't have to worry about these uh, additional applications running on the computer to help uh, um, run some of these, these uh, video or audio files, okay? Um, Plugin, so we don't really see helper applications used a lot anymore. Uh, we still do see some plugins uh, used. Um, plugins are just um, additional applications that uh, kind of tie into the browser. Uh, they run um, files that are kind of directly uh, integrated or embedded into the web page. Okay, so uh, like some of the plugins that you'll see are. Uh, different plugins that handle PDF files or um, uh, some of the other uh, multimedia files. So we'll, we'll show some of those here in a bit. Um, a container uh, is usually, it's designated by the file extension uh, that contains the, the media and the, the metadata. The, uh, an, an, a codec, uh, that's an algorithm used to compress the media. So you, it's used to compress your audio or video files. All right, and so we'll, we'll talk about some, some different types of media here in a bit, um, but the codec is what's used to compress that down. Uh, so it's a smaller file size, so it can run within the, uh, within the browser. Um, so the nice thing with HTML5 audio and video is it's native to the browser. Okay, so we don't have to have these additional plugins or um, applications to run uh, those files. Um, but some, uh, not all browsers support the same codecs, uh, which is something you kind of have to be aware of. Um, so I just kind of keep that in mind. All right, so some of the more commonly used plugins uh, used to have Flash Player. Uh, that's pretty much gone now. Um, there's really not a, lo a lot of Flash uh, left on the, the internet, um, primarily because uh, it wasn't well supported on uh, the mobile browsers. So uh, when smartphones started to um, gain popularity uh, back in the early 2000s uh, to mid 2000s, um, Flash was used all over the place uh, on the internet. Uh, you would see it used in lots of different sites. And once uh, smartphones became more popular, um, a lot of the companies like Apple uh, didn't support the Flash player uh, in the browser on their phones. So ultimately that kind of kind of killed Flash. So uh, we don't really um, see Flash used. Uh, we do see some Adobe uh, PDF reader uh, plugins, uh, some Windows Media Player, Apple QuickTime. Uh, you still see some of that around. All right, so some of our common audio files uh, that you'll find on the web 
uh, being used are WAV files, um, AIF files, so audio interchange file format, um, .mid, uh, .au. Uh, the most popular ones you're gonna see are primarily MP3, so MPEG-1 audio uh, layer. Um, there's open source .ogg file uh, that you'll see sometimes, uh, .m4a, uh, MPEG-4 audio. Um, but a lot of the ones you'll see are, uh, you'll see the, the MP3 files quite a bit, and just because uh, you can compress those files down quite a bit in size, and so they're easier to exchange uh, through, uh, through the browser. Uh, video files, uh, .mov, so QuickTime movie file. Uh, .avi, that's a Microsoft audio video file. Uh, WMV, Windows Media File. Uh, used to see the .flv, that was the flash video file. Again, you don't see that. Uh, MPEG, uh, the most popular one out there right now is .mp4, so uh, MPEG4 uh, video file. Um, and then again, that open source um, .ogv as well. Uh, but MPEG-4 is probably the most popular one uh, that you'll find. Uh, so just quickly uh, talking about copyright issues, uh, just a reminder that you, when you're working on web pages, either for yourself or for, uh, for a client, um, you don't wanna use uh, images, graphics, uh, audio, video, that's uh, copywritten. Um, so you don't wanna just pull stuff off the site and then um, put it on your site. Uh, if you, you are wanting to use something, you need to make sure you have uh, permission uh, from the, the, the source of that content. Um, and all work, including web pages, are uh, automated, uh, automatically uh, copywritten, uh, even if there's not a copyright mark or date. Uh, that's kind of written into the, the federal uh, laws there. Uh, there's fair use clause of copyright. Um, so some stuff that we do for education, um, nonprofit. Uh, there's some some things that we can do that have uh, fall under the fair use. And then uh, also uh, something that I'd encourage you guys to check out is the uh, Creative Commons. So that's just kind of a new approach to copyright. So a lot of times creators will um, publish stuff that's available for people to use uh, under Creative Commons, uh, which is kind of a nice thing. So um, if you Google search um, different things you, like images or files, uh, you can uh, actually go in and apply settings to uh, make sure that that photo or the graphic is um, open source or uh, available under Creative Commons to, uh, to use, uh, which is nice. Okay, so getting into some of the coding syntax here. Um, the uh, most basic method to provide uh, audio or video files is to um, uh, create a, a hyperlink, right? Um, so we do it the same way we would link uh, a, uh, an HTML file or a, a photo or graphic. Um, we have our ahref um, with the name of the, the file. So for this one, it's a .mp3 file. <clears throat> um, we have the title, uh, which is web design podcast. Uh, and then uh, we have the, um, the text there that shows up, uh, web design podcast with the, but we're using, using the uh, anchor link. Okay. So you can link that when you click it, um, the browser will open up its player and play that audio file or that video file. So again, modern browsers have this built in to where they can play those uh, right there within the browser, which is nice. Um, some uh, accessibility things we need to be aware of. Uh, you, if you can uh, provide a transcript for audio files, uh, captions for a video file, um, or a text format um, if there's, if it's a, you know, relatively uh, short audio clip or video clip, just to kind of explain what's going on. So um, it, again, these are best practices uh, that you'll try to follow. Um, sometimes it's hard for some of this audio and video to, to do this, but uh, if, if all possible, uh, you want to try to uh, make that accessible for uh, anybody that might have a disability. Okay, so um, 
This is kind of how you would do that uh, with uh, HTML5 with our source elements. Uh, we can provide uh, some of these audio controls. Okay, so this is if we're um, loading up a uh, MP3 file um, or .ogg. Okay, uh, we would use the audio control uh, element there in our code uh, source. Uh, we're telling it to find the sound loop.mp3 and we're telling it that's an audio MPEG file. Um, or uh, alternatively, we can, um, if we have that same sound file as a .ogg, uh, we can include both of those there so that the, uh, there's better accessibility so the browser can um, choose, uh, have multiple options to choose from, right? And then we choose our, um, our anchor link there to uh, let be people be able to um, have the option to download that MP3 file if they want. Um, or they can play it right there within the uh, audio control um, mechanism within the browser. So kind of the same thing with the video, right? Uh, we're just using video controls uh, element. And uh, one thing that we add here, uh, we can add like a little JPEG file. Um, it's kind of that thumbnail image. So kind of like what you see in uh, YouTube. Uh, we have to set a width and a height for that. Um, but we can load up a, a JPEG file, like a screenshot from the from the video, um, and then we're sourcing it. So again, if you have multiple versions of that uh, video file, uh, you can include those. So this one's using a .dot uh, m4b uh, MPEG4 file or a .dot ogv that open source uh, option, um, and then again also. Um, we can include a .mov file for people to download if they if they choose to. So that didn't have to be an uh, MOV. It could be the MP4 or M4V. Okay. Um, all right. So some of the other stuff we're going to cover quickly in this chapter. Um, so that the what we got up to there uh, was our audio and video. Um, um, linking those within the browser. Uh, some interactivity options here. Um, so we're kind of switching gears here to uh, talking about drop down menus in CSS. Um, we can create a nav container that has a sub menu. Uh, and so in that sub menu, uh, we can contain additional uh, unordered list elements uh, within a parent list element. Um, and then we can configure that submenu uh, an order list element to initially not display uh, when the when that page opens in the browser. And we could use some absolute positioning with that as well. So we'll I think there's some examples of this in the activities uh, that we'll code. So these just make a nice um, kind of add a nice design element to your pages um, by doing these drop down menus. Um, in the CSS, uh, we can style those uh, with however much padding or margins we want, uh, the font, colors, uh, create hover elements, um, all, all of that. So that's, uh, if, you, if you have multiple uh, sub links within your uh, page, um, you probably want to do some sort of a drop down menu like this. Okay, another uh, CSS3 transform property. Um, so, uh, you know, this again, if the design calls for it, you could do something like this where you could rotate or scale or move an element, um, a photo or graphic element on your page. Okay, so like the example here, kind of, we kind of rotate a little bit um, to give it more of that kind of postcard. Um, look to it. So we would just use the transform uh, rotate three degrees uh, property there uh, for that element and that kind of rotates it uh, three degrees there on the page. Again, this is with the newer CSS uh, that you're able to do this. Um, another one we, that's kind of nice, um, I've used this one before, uh, where you can create kind of a transition effect on a hover. Okay, so like on a menu item there, if you uh, mouse over like uh, the menu, uh, 
link there in the nav. Uh, you can do kind of a like a little two second. You can actually set that however many seconds you want. Probably wouldn't want to go over two seconds; it'd be too long. Um, but you can create like a kind of just a fade in or fade out effect uh, with that transition um, uh, property on your hovers, uh, which is kind of cool. Adds a, just a little bit more interactivity. Um, so HTML details and summary elements. Uh, we use these together to configure an interactive widget. Um, the detail element contains kind of a summary uh, element and detailed information. So um, if you've ever seen something like this, where it has the little uh, kind of little uh, arrows with a little drop down, uh, where you like click on the arrow and it kind of opens up or accordions, kind of has that accordion effect. Um, kind of nice for some pages where you um, visually, you want to kind of hide that information uh, initially because maybe if you have a couple paragraphs, um, it's too much to have all that display at once. And so you can kind of use this to um, use that kind of accordion effect to where um, the user then just uh, clicks that to um, open up the, the, the text that's uh, kind of nested within there. So again, kind of a nice little interactive feature. Uh, CSS image gallery. Right, so if you're ever doing a site where you uh, have multiple images, um, you can um, use uh, the CSS here. So if we're looking here, we have a, <clears throat> a couple of um, uh, ID selectors set up for that gallery span, uh, gallery hover. Uh, so you can kind of see the CSS there in that bottom left part. Right, and then uh, for each of those images, uh, the code up there um, to where we include that. And so again, this is just kind of a, you see that transition um, property in there as well. So it kind of adds a nice little, little effect to that. Uh, if you've ever wanted to do some sort of a gallery. All right, so now we're going to Java. So yeah, this, this chapter kind of jumps around a lot. Um, kind of introduces you to quite a few different things here. Um, so if you ever heard of Java, um, it's not the same as JavaScript, okay? Um, uh, Java is an object-oriented uh, programming um, language. Um, it's, uh, so you have to use an applet uh, that's contained within the, the page. Um, it's, it's got, some powerful features to it, uh, some flexibility. Uh, you, you can use Java to uh, develop standalone uh, applications um, or different applets that are kind of invoked by a web page when you come across it. Okay, so if we look at the applets here, um, it uses the dot class file extension and um, it, uh, the Java virtual machine uh, that you'll need to use um, interprets the that byte code into a type of machine language uh, that's um, usable for the operating system. And then after each, um, after the translation, so it goes from that dot class, uh, the virtual machine interprets that code, um, then that applet is executed and then it appears on the web page. So it kind of follows that flow there that you see on the right um, to where it, uh, um, has to read uh, read that um, that code that's kind of embedded there to interpret it and then uh, execute that uh, dot class file. So if we wanted to add like a Java applet to a web page, um, we'd use the object element in HTML5. Uh, we, just used, we used to use a uh, applet element, um, but with HTML5 we can use the object element. Right, so we see our opening uh, uh, object element tag there. So object type equals uh, application X Java applet. Um, you would set a width and a height for, for that to show up in your browser. Okay, um, you can have a title for it. Uh, you add your uh, parameter code uh, and then that doc class file that we talked about. Okay, um, and then once that's uh, 
that class file gets executed and then it shows up there in the, uh, the browser. So I, you guys probably won't be using uh, Java very much for uh, anything that we're doing in this class, uh, but there's quite a bit of stuff um, down the road as we get, as you get deeper into web development where um, you could do some, uh, some interesting stuff with uh, different Java applets. Um, so JavaScript, uh, this is something that um, we use quite a bit in web design, web development, okay? So it's an object-based uh, client-side scripting language. So the main, um, the main thing to pay attention to, to there is it's client-side, it's not a server-side. So it's client-side scripting language. Um, not the same as Java, um, two totally different things. Um, and then what your JavaScript does, I mean, it manipulates the objects associated within a, a web page document. So uh, the window, the document, elements like forms, hyperlinks, um, images, um, it's used to create more of that uh, fuller interactive um, uh, experience uh, in a web page. So some of the common uses that you'll see JavaScript use uh, display message boxes, uh, select list navigation, um, edit and validate information. Uh, you can do uh, image rollovers, create uh, different status messages, calculations, uh, a lot of different things. These are just kind of touching the, the surface. Um, there's tons and tons of different uses for JavaScript um, that, that we use and see. Uh, something we just wanted to introduce you to is the DOM. So you might sometimes hear the, the term DOM uh, in programming. So it's a document object model. Okay. Um, what the DOM does, it defines basically every object and element that's on a web page. Uh, it uses a hierarchical structure. Um, <clears throat> and what you think about it, it accesses the page elements and applies styles um, to each of those page elements, okay? So if we look at like a, a web page here, we have uh, the window, okay? It's the browser window. Uh, there's a document that's tied to that, uh, the history, uh, your location, uh, the navigator, okay? And then like when you break the document down even further, um, uh, anchor, form, image, links, uh, elements, sources, Okay, um, and then for the navigator section of it, uh, the application name and the application version, All right? So this is uh, just a way to model um, how uh, that, how your page is basically structured, okay? So it's um, breaking that down into objects and elements uh, within the page. All right, so. I feel like this this uh, chapter is kind of <laughs> it just go, kind of goes all over the place. We've got a lot of different things here. Um, so AJAX, all right. So you might hear hear the term AJAX. Um, it stands for Asynchronous JavaScript and XML. Um, <clears throat> so what it's doing is um, combining these different technologies uh, like standards based uh, X HTML and CSS. Uh, the DOM, uh, XML, uh, which is kind of a, uh, a language that um, you set up to process data. Um, and then the asynchronous data retrieval uh, using an XML HTTP request and also incorporating JavaScript, okay? So um, there's a link there that you can look at. Um, so that uh, webfoundations.net uh, slash CSS, if you wanna look at that. Uh, incorporate some some Ajax there. Again, we're we're not going to do anything really with Ajax. Um, uh, this is something that we get into further down the road in web development courses. It's a little more advanced. All right, uh, jQuery is another term. Um, jQuery is a JavaScript library, um, and we use that to uh, help simplify client side scripting. Okay. Um, uh, we talked about Bootstrap a while back, um, a little bit. So uh, like Bootstrap is that um, CSS and JavaScript um, 
type of a, a process uh, that we use to format our web pages. Um, Bootstrap also uses a lot of jQuery. Okay, so these uh, different um, libraries uh, that we use to, again, help um, modify our uh, interface and our uh, the interactivity of our uh, web pages. Also, um, to help communicate shared data, uh, we can use jQuery. All right. Um, so this jQuery API. All right. So this these different types of jQuery um, uh, examples that we can incorporate into our web pages. We could do things like uh, image slides, uh, slideshows, um, animations. So if you've ever seen the websites that have kind of a, a carousel effect where it's kind of rotating through uh, different images on the home page. Okay, so uh, we're probably using some jQuery there to, to handle those. Uh, more complex uh, mouse movements and clickings uh, on a page uh, can use jQuery. Uh, any kind of manipulation of the document as well. So again, just introducing you guys to these terms. Uh, we're not really going to be doing a lot of coding uh, with jQuery, but just want to introduce you to the term. Uh, so it's kind of kind of there for future use. Uh, all right, so uh, HTML5 APIs. Uh, an API is a protocol that allows the software components to communicate, uh, interact, share data. So uh, um, different APIs that are intended to kind of work with HTML5, um, CSS, JavaScript, uh, a lot of those are uh, currently under development. They have to go through that whole uh, approval process through the W3C uh, the consortium. So things like geolocation, uh, web storage, offline web apps, uh, Canvas, um, those ones are pretty much in use now. Um, so we, we see those in use. I know for some of the other uh, intro uh, classes that you might have in web, um, web development, uh, you do some stuff with Canvas, right? So create some basic uh, interactivities in Canvas, uh, geolocation as well. Uh, so geolocation uh, just allows your web page to share their geographic location. So you start, you're, you're seeing a lot of this now. I, no, I notice this when I go to web pages where the browser will ask you um, to share your location um, because what it's wanting to do is like if I go to homedepot.com or whatever, um, it's going to ask me to share my location so it can pull up um, my nearest Home Depot store and load up like the inventory that they have in their store. Okay. So again, uh, this starts getting a little bit of a touchy subject with privacy and some of that. Um, but I, I am seeing this quite a bit on a lot of different web pages. I'm sure you guys do too as well. Uh, when you go, they want to um, access your location. Uh, web storage. Um, so again, this is uh, letting um, letting it store some of that data um, on the uh, uh, server side. Okay. Uh, traditionally, the the cookie object had been used to store information. Uh, now we're starting to see this web storage API used. Um, so it's storing those different sessions uh, that you uh, interact with within a certain site. Um, offline web apps, uh, not as popular. Don't see a whole lot of this, um, but you can uh, develop a, a web app that can be written in HTML and CSS to um, run on a browser if you're offline. So you might see this sometimes if um, the site calls for um, something where you can still interact and do things. Um, even if you're not connected, um, you can uh, maybe do stuff on your phone. Um, it's kind of similar to like, um, like if you wanted to do Netflix or something offline, okay, it's storing some of that information locally um, on, your, on your device. Uh, the Canvas element, uh, so like I said, uh, I know one of the other intro classes, um, 
uh, do, you, you do some stuff with Canvas, so you can draw lines, shapes, uh, manip manipulate text, images. Um, it's using uh, the Canvas API along with JavaScript uh, to create that interactivity. Okay, so this is kind of an example here. Uh, you'll notice in the syntax, we have a, <clears throat> our JavaScript, so our script element um, using Java, JavaScript, um, the function draw me property. And so we're creating our canvas, okay? Uh, and then we have all these different variables that we're doing where we um, are embedding the fonts and the, the different shapes and the colors. And then of course, as we get more complex here, uh, we start to add in, uh, you can add in buttons and functions and um, add in some of the, the math part of it to where um, you could basically create maybe some real simple uh, interactive games and things like that uh, using the canvas. And that's it. Okay. All right. Like I said, this is kind of a weird chapter has a introduces a, a lot of different things. So um, primarily what we'll be doing on Wednesday then is our uh, hands on activities. Okay, so there's um, looking here I don't think there's very many I think there's only like six or seven uh, that we'll do so we'll do um, we'll work some with the uh, audio and video files on our uh, web page uh, and then I think we do a little bit of stuff with like the the menu the um, the, the sub menu CSS and a little bit with the CSS transformation uh, elements as well so we will cover those on Wednesday. So we'll do the coding uh, activities on Wednesday and we'll, we'll get through those in plenty of time on Wednesday. Um, and then after that, so you'll have a case study this week um, for those, uh, you just have to embed some uh, audio and video elements into your Pacific Trail site. And after that, that's it for the case studies. Uh, you guys will be done with those. Uh, we'll cover a little bit of information on chapters uh, 12 and 13. Um, no quizzes or anything with those. It's just uh, for your information. And like I said, uh, with only three weeks in November, um, the rest of the class is pretty much going to be you guys working on your final uh, web project. Okay. All right. That's all I got today. So you guys have a great rest of your day and we will see you all on Wednesday. Have a good one.